Hiya! So this is day two of the 24 day extravaganza of physics questions and I am focusing on this one which is actually a little bit of mechanics and a little bit of energy thrown in. So this is question two and I've got a diagram below that shows the possible design for a storage system used to generate electricity. So it's basically you've got an upper reservoir, goes through here, goes, turns a turbine, which turns a generator when you do magnetic fields you understand what that does and then it exits. Water from the upper reserve is to fall through a distance. Now this is important, fall through a distance. There we go, get my highlighter out. Fall through a distance or a vertical distance of 90 meters before reaching the power output. The water turbo rotates the turbine in the generator that drives um, uh, electrical generator. After leaving the turbine, the water travels through the pipe. Show that the maximum possible speed of the water as it enters the turbine is about 40 meters per second. So give you a few seconds to think which way, how you're going to approach this. So you can pause the video and have a go. Okay. So if something is dropping and it is moving, it is basically, we're talking about going from GPE to kinetic. Okay. So I know that a maximum possible, of course, is MGH, is a half MV squared. So we're assuming no friction. Don't care about the mass of the water. Okay. So what I've got here is I've got 9.81 times by the height it could drop, so that's going to be 90 meters, equals a half times by V squared. And there's a very important reason I'm using this V, and you'll find out in about two seconds. So make sure your velocity V and your velocity V look different. Okay, so I end up with 9.81 times by 90 times by 2, all square rooted. And that gives me 9.81 times by 90 times by 2, square rooted, gives me an answer of, I believe, 42 meters per second. OK, so this thing here where it says show that what they want you to do is to find an answer which is close enough to the true one. OK, so it is show that. So what you do is you, you get one mark for your method and then you would get one mark for actually reaching an answer which is close to what they're saying. So 40 metres. Yeah, this is about 40 metres. Now, the reason they're giving you that information for show that question. So if you ever see show that and you're not too sure how to do it. Normally, in show that questions, the next question uses that data. OK, so this one, the volume. Oh, I love when they do this. So the volume of the turbine is three every second. So every second that much um, goes through. So this is a tube. OK, and every in every second, the volume of this tube of water that passes through the turbine is 3.5 meters square. So the volume of this is 3.5 meters cubed. Estimate the radius of the pipe. So volume is the area times by the length of this tube. So this is the cross-sectional area, okay, and this is where it becomes interesting. This here is of course the length, and because it is every second, and you know that the speed is 40 meters per second, so it's a little hint that you could be using it here. I know that this length every second is going to be about 42 meters per second. So I can actually work out the area. So they like doing this trick, by the way. If you ever get a bit stumped and they give you a volume or a density and they're giving you a speed and you go, well, what's happening? It's normally to do with the idea that this, uh, the length of this tube actually is the speed, okay? So I've got 3.5 equals my area times, I'm gonna use 42, they will allow, um, you to use 40. So if you've got a show that didn't know how to do this, you could use the 40 in here and they would give you marks for it. So 3.5 divided by 42 is 0.8. So the area is 0.083. Okay. And of course that equals pi r squared. And you can find pi, you can divide that by pi, square root your answer, and I get an answer of 0.16 meters which you get one mark for the method, so actually working out the volume, and then one mark for your answer here of doing that. So little hints, show that. If you've got a show that answer, normally they want to use this answer in the next question. So if you've had a show that before, this number must appear somewhere in this question, okay? And normally when they're talking about volume, make sure you read, does it say every second? Draw shapes, have a look. If they've given you a speed and they've given you a volume, it tends to be that the length of the tube or whatever is actually the speed. Okay, so just have a look. Okay, the power, the water leaves the power chamber at a speed of 12 meters per second. So what's happened? Water's gone in, 
energy is being transferred to the turbine and then the water leaves again. OK, so what we have here, so the power cha chamber at a speed of 12 meters per second. So the kinetic energy, wrong color, the kinetic energy when it goes in is going to be a half mv squared. OK, and they give me the density of water because they want me to find, of course, the mass. So, of course, is density. If you ever see density, I tend to write immediately the density formula. So now in this case, I've got a thousand times by my volume per second is 3.5. And that will give me my mass every second. So, of course, that's 3,500 3, kilograms every second. OK. And of course, this is interesting because power, of course, is how much energy per second. So this, of course, is the mass per second. OK, so it's just one of those things that they like doing with these kinds of questions. You see density, write the density formula out will always help you. OK, so the kinetic energy in uh, per second, of course, is going to be half times by 3,500 times by my speed of the water coming in squared, so that's 42 squared. So 3,500 uh, times by 0.5 times by 42 squared. So the amount of energy that's coming in every second is quite high, 3087000 joules. And what is leaving, okay, is again half in V squared. So that's a half times 3,500 times by 12 squared. So 0.5 times 3,500 times by 12 squared. That is 2521,23 joules. So the what's happening is that the difference in energy has actually been transferred to the turbine. So the change in energy equals 3087,000 minus my answer is, of course, uh, 2.8. 3, 5 times 10 to the 6 joules. And because this is all about mass per second, we are working out about this energy transfer per second. OK, this, of course, is the energy per second. Which equals power. So I know that this answer in here is 2.835 times 10 to the 6 is my answer. And of course, the unit is going to be watts. So where you get marks for this, OK, so let's actually grab the mark scheme out. And so you get one mark here for working out the mass of the water. So that's a really big hint. If you get a density formula, find out. If you can't get density, write the density formula to try and find the mass. Uh, energy available per second is exactly what I did, 2.8. And I've got megawatts, OK? Had a look at the examiner's report. You can get away with just saying uh, 10 to the 6 and putting watts in. So one mark from finding my mass one mark for my energy transfer, one mark for the correct answer, and one mark for my correct unit. If you ever see a, a unit space like this, even if you get the number, no numbers, you can just put the unit in. So just keep aware of that one. Energy losses are estimated to be 60% of the reduced hour part for the turbine and the generator, up to 60% of the value collected in Part C. Explain two, loss uh, two possible reasons for this energy loss. There could be, of course, uh, friction, so it says explain. So you've got to be careful. You've got to put a little bit more detail. You've got to say, you've got to say this is it, this happens because. So energy lost due to friction because, um, yeah, start again. So when you see the word explain, you should be using, the in your head, you should say, okay, I'm losing energy because friction between um, the water and of course the pipes and pipes could remove energy. That's the first one. Okay. So that's the first one. So I, I, in my head, I'm saying I am losing energy because there is friction between this, this is, this is what I'm writing. I'm going, there is friction between water and the pipes that could remove energy. And of course you can actually lose. So it explains this because you lose energy through heat due to friction. So there's another friction, but I'm being specific about where between the water and the turbine blades. So I've actually been very specific and given two very specific different places that it could affect. So if I actually go to the mark scheme, it says 
heat and mechanical friction in the turbines and friction in the walls or turbulence. So these are two different sources of energy loss. One is the water and the pipes, and one is the turbine and the water. So just saying friction won't give you enough information. They'll allow electrical heating in the wires as well. So it's really important that when you see an explain question in your head, you should read the question and then say, explain two possible reasons for this energy loss. And in your head you go, I get energy loss because, and that is what how you should be responding to this. I get energy loss because there is friction between the water and the pipes could remove energy. Or I could lose energy, of course, because there's loss of energy due to heat, due to friction between water and the turbine blades. So it's that explain in your head, regurgitate the question um, and go, okay, I this is happening because, and that is what your answer should be, the bit after the because, okay? So that is number two, little few hints about, you see density, write the density formula. If you see anything with volumes, draw shapes, okay? And so that's question two of the Advent extravaganza.